Most people in Australia have heard this information yet. I know some of you surely wouldn't have, but most have. But in the United States and Europe and the rest of the world, I don't think this news has reached you. However, you need to know this stuff because manufacturers, I've been saying this for a long time. They have been blatantly lying about the efficiency of their cars, about the actual range you can get. So people, they say stuff like, I've heard this, I've had this conversation with people, my hybrid can do more kilometers than your EV. And I'll say to them, oh, can it? So how do you know that? And they'll say, because that's what Kia says, or because that's what Hyundai or whoever it is says. And often these hybrids are getting nowhere near the range that um, people think they are. And when I say nowhere near, I'm talking, you know, sometimes you get an electric car, it might get 10% less than the range that's claimed, depending on how you drive it. As long as the tires are pumped up pretty well, you'll get, you'll get not too far off, depending on what kind of driving you do though. But with some of these hybrids, they're getting 33% less, 33%. I actually think these cars should be refunded. I, I, I think 33%, that figure is crazy. Now, this is not highway testing, by the way. If this was highway testing or high speed testing or some kind of weird testing that kind of made these cars look bad, I'd say, well, okay, no, no, hang on a minute. The testing's not fair, but this actual testing is actually quite lenient. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. The study here in Australia found that some hybrids, particularly from certain brands, are using up to 33% more fuel than advertised. And that's... um. That's pretty damning because this study was not designed to try to screw over manufacturers. It wasn't designed to say, ha ha, we caught you. In fact, some cars were totally met the numbers. They met the efficiency range. Straight up internal combustion cars, many of them were actually pretty close to the numbers they've claimed. So the test was actually fairly lenient. But the test also showed that hybrid cars rank among the most unexpectedly thirsty models. And I've got to say, I think plug-in hybrids, which haven't been tested here, would also fall under this category because really when your battery runs out, plug-in hybrid, you're kind of carrying your battery, right? You're carrying a pretty heavy battery. And, and then the car is just an engine carrying a battery and it's like carrying several extra people in the car. But anyway, 25 of 30 vehicles tested on Australian roads failed to meet their laboratory test results, and 11 of the cars used 10% or more fuel than they claimed. The Australian Automobile Association revealed the findings in its latest round of on-road vehicle testing, which also found six models produced more noxious emissions than allowed legally. When I say more noxious emissions, I'm talking about the emissions that cause cancer. They actually emitted up to three times more than they said. The results came amid a greater focus on vehicle emissions here in Australia because of the introduction of the new vehicle efficiency standards in 2025. These standards are meant to get manufacturers to not dump polluting cars in Australia. Also, the standards came about because there's rising sales of hybrid cars and people want to know, are these hybrid cars I'm buying, are they really as efficient as claimed? And they're not. The association tested a wide range of vehicles in a $14 million real-world testing program, ranging from large SUVs, vans, small cars, utes, people movers, etc. How were they tested? Well, the testing situation was probably set up, I think, to be too generous. The vehicles were tested on a 93-kilometer, so about a 60-mile route around Geelong and Victoria, with tailpipe emissions captured on urban streets, rural roads and motorways, and compared to lab test results. Now, the truth is in this area, uh, a lot of it is just driving 60 to 80 kilometers an hour, not a lot of stopping and starting. So I think that the numbers in this were probably generous, if anything. A small SUV had the greatest gap in fuel consumption. The Hyundai Kona Hybrid, or the Hyundai Kona Hybrid, used 33% more fuel on the road than what it was claimed to use, 33% more. The Kia Stonic, also a hybrid, used 26% more fuel. Uh, the, the Hyundai i30 hybrid, 
17% more fuel. The Toyota Fortuna, which honestly don't buy one of those, they're terrible, use 16% more fuel. And the Kia Sportage Hybrid, 14%. So Kia and Hyundai cars had the worst variance in fuel use. They're They didn't get anywhere near close to their actual claims. Findings that one third of the vehicles consume more fuel on the road than in the laboratory indicated a widespread issue in the automotive industry, um, said Managing Director Michael Bradley. It's becoming clear that car makers continue to optimize their vehicles' performance for lab testing. Many new cars are too often overstating their improvements in fuel use and environmental performance, he said. Some vehicles perform as advertised, but most of them don't. And our program is seeking to reward car makers that deliver genuine financial and environmental savings. Six of the 30 vehicles tested produced far more noxious emissions than legally allowed under Australian laws, including the Ford Ranger Ute, which was really bad, the Toyota Hiace, and the Toyota Fortuna. Now, Toyota has been involved in ongoing diesel emissions scandals with its Hino truck division and Toyota itself, And it appears to me that Toyota hasn't learned its lesson. Five vehicles actually did quite well. The Ford Transit van, uh, it put out 9% less emissions. The Lexus NX350 Hybrid, or 350H, 7% less. And the Mercedes-Benz GLC 250, 3% less. Here's the thing. Uh, The association doing this testing, they've actually tested 114 vehicles over the last two years. They found of the 114 vehicles, 88 models, 88 internal combustion vehicles, hybrids, internal combustion cars, a combination, failed to meet their promised fuel consumption, some of them by very large amounts. So when you're having that conversation with a friend and he says, how much range do you get from your EV? Maybe you should point them to this to say, how much range do you really get from your hybrid? It's not as much as you think. Thanks for watching. Experts from The Economist say the hype, the hype right now, and there is a lot of hype for hybrid cars will not last, and it could be a critical mistake to purchase one. Now, what are the reasons for this? Why are they saying this? One reason could be have a look at Norway, but there's some other reasons as well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Speaking of hybrids, there'll be plenty of plug-in hybrids and fully electric cars at the Melbourne EV Show, 27th, 28th, and 29th of June. I'll put a link in the description. Would love to see you there. The Economist says the hype for hybrid cars will not last, and fully electric vehicles will win 